Okay. So let's get started. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dennis Gilmore. I'm one of the Fedora release engineers. And today we're going to be talking about redefining how we deliver Fedora. And I guess we'll wait for our transcriber to get settled. significant changes to how we build and ship Fedora. The biggest one was that we switched to using Punchy 4. Quiet in the back, please. Uh, we, we switched to using Punchy 4. It's um, based on the code that was used internally to create RHEL with a pretty significant amount of work by <coughs> Blue Horse Center here and other people. Um, but it is we probably had the biggest well, we, we had the biggest change in how we build and ship Fedora since we got Node's Core and Extras and got Punji initially. We also switched to using Live Media Creator for making live CDs, which is part of the Anaconda supported set of tools, um, which is nice because I mean one it switched from Yum to DNF. And two, it means it's something that they have guaranteed that, well, committed to supporting long term. So you know, we'll see how we end up with that. And we also switched Rawhide and Branch to be complete every night. So I mean, that means that we make all the installer DVDs, the install ISOs, all the live CDs, all the Docker images, the cloud images, you know, the massive multitude of things that go into making you know, a Fedora release. That gives us the benefit that when we actually get to branch, or when we branch and we go to do alpha, we can actually be sure that you know, Fedora is going to close. Because in the, like in the past, what we would do is when we, when we were done with, you know, say, Fedora 23, we just didn't do any composers for two or three months or whatever the schedule was between you know, the GA and then the branch. And we'd get to branch point and then we'd try to you know, make an install DVD and it oh, goes together. it doesn't work. Or oh, this got broken or that got broken. So now we have the continuous stream of you know, install media uh, that is able to be tested on a regular basis and ensures that you know, when we get to branch point, we can um, you know, be pretty sure it's going to go smoothly. It has a side effect where we are now churning probably 10 gig, maybe, on the mirrors a day. Oh, no. no. Or with, than that. With all the ISOs? Yeah, it's just 8 gig alone for the game space. You know? yeah. I mean, it's, so it's, talking, it's closer to like 70. So we're churning about 70 gig a day on the disk just with all the ISOs. It's nice to have them, but it you know presents other problems. So at some point I think we're gonna look at changing it so that we only put a test of compose once a week onto the mirrors. We'll still put the you know the everything repo on the mirrors every day, but the the full compose we'll just put one that you know once a week that we have done some kind of you know vetting of it and ensure that it's going to install you know, the live CD. At least everything that's you know, release blocking is, in theory, going to work, which leads into part of my longer term plan to entirely kill off Alpha and just do a better release and do a final release. And you know, that's it. One last phrase. It, you know, it, essentially, you know, Rawhide will always be Alpha quality if we you know, put in enough testing and gating and all that kind of stuff to you know, ensure, the, ensure the quality. So 
So in Fedora 25, we've got a few new things in, we're going to do some new things, and we've got some new people. Um, so one of the things we've already got in place is a workstation, workstation OS tree with an installer DVD for that. So every night for four months, three months now, as part of the Rawhide Compose, we've made a workstation OS tree. So you can install that and, you know, workstation being immutable, you can't then go and yum install my latest favorite thing. So you need to use the you know, flat pack, formerly known as XPG apps, to be able to install extra things. Um, but I was told today that it's working really well. So the, the workstation guys are you know, pretty excited. That was a pretty minor config change, dropped in a little snippet into a repo where we've got large templates and, and for luck, it worked. So that's kind of cool. We're going to be making the cockpit layer image. And I don't know if anyone cares whether or well, wants to know the details of that, but it's the first of you know, layer images. It's a new deliverable type. Uh, it's you know, something that builds upon the Docker base images that we've had for a while, but allows you to you know, get more apps, more you know, container for con content. Part of that, we have a Docker registry that Fedora is running. So hopefully longer term, we're going to make the at least the CentOS and the Fedora um, Docker builds will pull primarily from, you know, if you pull a Fedora image, it's going to come from the Fedora registry. If you pull a CentOS image, it'll come from the CentOS registry and possibly even well, I you know, would need to broach that with the people that have the strings higher up above me and whether you know, that's okay. But, yeah, we'll see. Um, we're also going to be doing Windows and OS X builds of the Media Creator tool. Uh, we've got some, a couple of Mac machines that we're using for the OS X build because you have to do that entirely natively. But the Windows build, the plan is to use MinGW and build it as an RPM on Linux. Yes. And cross build it and then we'll extract the executable binaries out of the RPM, sign them, ship them so that people can install it without you know, any kind of errors or saying, hey, you need to give the special permissions. And you know, the result is that then people going from Windows and OS X have a verifiable tool that you know, we provide that they can install into their machines. It will download the ISO for them and put it onto USB stick. That's kind of cool and a very different you know, route for Fedora from what we've done historically. So, I think it's kind of fun. And we have a guy called Mohan Badu who is going to be taking over doing most of my stuff. So he's going to be doing all the composers for Fedora 25 with a lot of hand holding for me and <coughs> probably some hand holding for Peter and you know, other people within you know, Fedora infrastructure as he gets up to speed and fully understands how we do everything. So you know, it's kind of exciting. Um, it's going to allow me to be able to focus on unifying how we build Corel and Fedora and making the tooling you know, consistent between the two of them and tell Blue Watch Freshman what, yeah, what, what, what he needs to do. So th there's some stuff coming in Fedora 25. We have things that we want to do after that. And we have quite a few things that we want to do after that. I mean, OSBS is coming in, but it's very limited in Fedora 25. We're, we're, we're essentially we're doing the cockpit layered image that is something that's been used on the OS uh, the Tumblr post for a long time, and they've gone off on the side somewhere and built the uh, you know their own cockpit layered image and container and pushed it into the upstream Docker hub, and they say hey this is this Fedora thing but it's not it's not built by within Fedora it's you know kind of off the side so we're actually going to do it ourselves. Um, in Fedora 25, but then going forward, we plan to open the floodgates and allow people to be able to build layered images um, themselves. You know, there's been other talks on that. We're going to be working really heavily on automation. We, we want to get RHEL Engine to a point where we're only dealing with exceptions. You know, when a compose request comes in, QA you know, clicks a button and says, hey, we want to compose. The compose happens automatically. And the only time that anyone in Reliance needs to step in is if it blows up. 
Um, so automation is a big part of our future, as is alternative architectures and changing what they are. We're starting a slow progress with the goal of unifying all of our architectures into a single Koji instance. And the thing that defines what is you know, primary, what's alternative, what you know, is where the output goes. Possib possibly the first thing that we'll see um, is that I686 will not be on the you know, pub Fedora and we'll move that to an alternative location, maybe an F25, depending on how well Lubash server does at getting <laughs> support in Punji for all of that. <laughs> I'm just going to throw him under the bus while he's sitting in front of me. Um, but nice. yeah. if, if, if it's not F25 that we you know, demote um, I686, it will be at I mean, it's for all intents and purposes, it is pretty much demoted. It, it's, it's essentially demoted at the moment. I mean, Fesco has said that I686 is not release blocking in any way, shape, or form. So if something fails on that, Except that we move on. Yeah, we did. Right, which, which is why, I mean, multi web is the reason why we need to keep, at least it, we need to keep it in the primary hub. And moving the all the other secondary architectures into the primary hub means that people like Peter and Dan Horak no longer need to run Koji Shadow, which takes up probably half of their time. And it's a steaming pile of crap. It's, I mean, it's slow, clunky, error prone. It does the job, and <laughs> it does it somewhat well, but it, it's a it time works, but it's very, very time-consuming. It, it, it's a time-consuming thing to keep up and keep working. Um, so yeah, that's going to free up release engineering people and you know the ar different architecture people to work on fixing architecture bugs or, or you know, enhancing the architectures, uh, enhancing architectures, or enhancing you know the. Fedora release experience, enabling us to you know do more, get get different things done and out. Um, so I think it's a really important thing for us for Relenge that you know the alternative architectures move into the primary Koji and we redefine what that is. I mean I, I think we can affect you know at this point the term secondary architectures is dead. It, it well is dying I guess, but. Well, it'll take away a while to disappear, but yeah. I mean, so in Fedora 24, um, those that actually read the release announcement will have seen that the sec or the alternate architectures announcement went out as part of the primary yeah. uh, announcement, so, and we released everything simultaneously. Yeah. And I used in that component of the release announcement both secondary architectures, because that's what everyone knows, but also the term alternate architectures to start to transition over to. Because the fact of the matter is, they're not really secondary for a lot of people that are working on things like tool chains and that. They, they are just as effect, like, they, they treat them exactly the same as at x86-64. Um, and so it, it's for quite some time not been the right term to, to, to discuss. So we're sort of going to x86-64 and then sort of alternate architectures and then um, I forget the term that Josh came up with the other day, I think it's experimental architectures for things like RISC-V and MIPS and things like Spot. that. If I'm not I, mentioning that word. If sure. If I pulls my finger out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean there's a lot of, making that change will, will help a lot. Um, we're looking, we've almost got completed. We, I think there's a couple of bugs that still need to be squished and we'll be able to have signed repos in Koji. And that'll enable us then to actually fully support like triggers and suggests and recommends and stuff in RPM. At the moment, the bottleneck we have in supporting all the new fancy features in Koji, in um, RPM, is that Bodai runs on RHEL 7 and it uses RHEL 7's <coughs> RPM when it matches the, the repo. And RHEL 7's RPM doesn't know a thing about triggers, suggests, recommends, enhances, all of that, you know, all the new fancy stuff that RPM's added in the last two or three years. Um, 
And so, you know, we can't, we, we can't support that today. If we try to match a repo on Route 7, it blows up. So, you know, we're going to switch Bodites using signed repos, potentially switch Punji using signed repos. Probably longer term, we will absolutely switch it, but shorter term, probably not. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's another enhancement that would be very useful. We're also looking at, well, Jake Roguski is going to be writing the um, support to make DVD ISOs and install ISOs in Koji as Koji tasks. And that'll just change. Like today, they're done in Koji as a run root task, so they're a little vague, they're a little harder to find because Koji Web is stuck in the 90s and needs an overhaul. And so, like, I guess we do have the run route searchable, but then you don't know what the run route was in. Um, so yeah, having the DVD building in Koji would be kind of nice. Thanks, Joe. Um, We're good to listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that's as bad as I get, sorry. Um, yeah, you, know, you can never see that. But in your eyes forever. We've got a, you know, a couple of guys in RCM, in you know, Elise Engineering, working on modularity, and we're working with the people that are doing the modularity work. What it means today, who knows, but and what it's going to mean tomorrow, we, you know, we don't know, but at some point, you know, it's coming, um, and being involved is make, meaning, making sure that we are fully able to, you know, Embrace it as it comes along, as opposed to having this thing come down the road later on. And I'm like, well, how do we? You know, it, it'll it'll make our life easier by being involved. So that's so not a shock. Basically. Yeah, it's it's not going to be a shock. We're, we're going to be sure that we get the things out of it that we need to get. You know, that we have reproducibility and audibility and all of the good stuff that we need to have to provide an assurance that. What is in, you know, the modules is good, you know, Fedora content. We've got some work that hopefully will start very soon. We're kind of being on again, off again, trying to find resources to do it for automated signing. Um, we're going to set up a service to enable us to request signing, so that you know, hopefully within the F twenty six development cycle, Rawhide will be completely signed all the time. And it will, the, RP, the RPMs will always be signed. We'll be able, you know, we've got the two-week atomic composers that we've been doing. We have to manually sign some, the checksums and some pieces of that at the, as part of the, the release process. We can automate you know, doing that. We have um, the open H.264 codec repo that we added in Fedora 24. We signed the repo data of that so that if you get a verification that that repo data came from Fedora because it's not using mirrors in any way, shape, or form. We, Fedora hosts the um, metadata for the codec, but due to the patent grant from uh, Cisco, there's a requirement that Cisco delivers the binary for you to receive the patent grant. So what we do is we redirect to um, we, we, we redirect all RPM downloads to Cisco, which was a fun challenge to try and solve in the last cycle because our initial plan and implementation was we ship Cisco a tarball that has all the repo data, all the RPMs, and all the, you know, everything that goes with the codec. Turns out their CDN doesn't support directories. And Young and DNF require directories because it has a repo data directory that you need to get the repo md.xml file. And that was not possible, which is why you know, Fedora is hosting all the repo data. It has, a, it has a side effect that we actually know how many people download the codec because it's logged, but you know, the, the IP is logged and what RPM they get. Who they are, we have no idea. Um, but uh, it's, we also got a, we had a desire that we want to sign the atomic commits, and the, at the moment, like the OS3 commits, 
uh, done at the end of long running processes, part of Rawhide, part of branched, at the end of pushing updates. And we can't do that today. So like all the OS treatments are not signed. Going forward, the plan is, we, we, you know, we want to sign that. So you know, it's a better thing for uh, you know, the end users that they can get a little more assurance that the bits come from Fedora. So we have some challenges. One of the big challenges we have, that I briefly touched on, is mirror churn. Not only is the 70 odd gig of ISOs that we change every day in Rawhide, and probably the same in Branched, we had uh, we had the OS tree repos on you know, in Pub Fedora from when we very first implemented OS tree. We ended up having to remove it because there was almost a million tiny little files and mirrors were having a hard time asking all of that content. It's taken them forever to go through and stat all the files to see if anything in there changed. Which was also then destroying the performance. Which was the story. Production storage platform. Yes. Internally. And, and it, it caused all sorts of dramas. Um, so we ended up pulling it off and due to the way that um, OS3 is currently implemented and not using mirrors, it was actually a fairly simple thing. We put in a redirect, and clients were none the wiser that we changed the location. Um, but that, you know, that, that's a problem. So we need we need to figure out how we're going to mirror OS3 content. We need to figure out ways that we can deliver frequent changes in like Warhide, but not have massive churn on the mirrors because you know mirrors get cranky when you're wasting bandwidth and wasting disk. And waste no error. And we are hitting more limit too, because it's, well, it got smaller, but it's about 11 terabytes. Yeah, so yeah. all of Pub is 11 terabytes currently. Well, it's true. And that is going to continue to grow forever because we don't actually remove any of the release, the release content and the updates, updates testing at the point that a release goes end of life, that never gets removed. It gets moved over into archive and hard linked and, mm -hmm. you know. But left there for posterity. As far as uh, prevention policy goes, do you think that it makes sense if we would be able to reproduce like every single DVD that you actually at least don't get rid of ISOs and could you just rebuild them if you would need it? Yeah, we could. I mean, we used to make you do templates and no one was using it. We dropped it silently in Fedora 13 or 14, and nobody ever said, oh, uh, actually, there's one guy. There's a mirror that was apparently using the Jigdo templates. He would ask and call the RPMs. He would then use the Jigdo to recreate the ISO, put the ISO in place, and then run an ask and over everything. So just to make sure that he, you know, got it, all the bits actually right. You know, there's a mirror in Brazil where you know, bandwidth can be an interesting limited you know, resource. Um, but yeah, so th th there's a lot of <coughs> issues we need to think about with mirrors. We need to consider. You know, I mean, the, the zero-day updates for Fedora 24 was just under 9 gig. So the change that we had from when we froze for final and when we said, hey, we're good to go, all the change that was queued up, that was 9 gig worth of data in, in one shot. You know, for, for an OS that's not even released, we've got well, 9 gig worth of change. Why don't we just compose that incrementally if the change is already that way? We don't compose it incrementally yeah. because it um, has the potential to break the compose. We can't move it into the, the state. As soon as the compose gets flagged, you have until next Tuesday, and until it's declared okay, you have until next Tuesday, um, where there's no changes that are going to break the compose because the compose is done, it just bit flip. You could push updates in that time. Oh, we do. Oh, right. yeah. So we have the go-no-go -no -go meeting on the Thursday. Right. So we decide that it's got that, that that's gold. We lock the tags down in go well, we once we've decided it's gold, there's usually one or two packages that we've included in the compose that have not gone stable. We make sure they've gone stable and that everything that is in you know Fedora twenty, you know, the Fedora twenty four or twenty five is in the F twenty five tag, we lock it and it's you know, done forever. We then um, make some changes in Bodai so that Bodai, instead of 
tagging updates into F24, tags into F24 updates, and then once we've made that change, we then start doing you know, pushes for the zero day oh, okay. update. So this was, I mean, we, we had, we did have one, did we have one or two slips in F24? Right on there. Well, in, in the no. final freeze. I think it was, oh. I think it may have been two, was it two weeks, set? Matthew? What's that? Fedora 24 final slip from like when we froze to, was it one or two weeks? Yeah, yeah. There's some slips earlier, so it might be one. So instead of the approximately two weeks that we go from freeze to gold, we ended up with almost three weeks. And in that three-week period, we accumulated nine gig worth of changes. And you know, it, it's a lot of churn on the mirrors. Um, the mirror network is bigger and smaller than it used to be. We have less hosts and less mirrors. But the mirrors that we have have more bandwidth, more, bandwidth, more disk, better resources than we used to have. You know, ten years ago we had maybe you know two hundred universities across the states around mirrors. Most of them only had ten to hundred megabit connections. The mirrors we have today, most of them have you know gigabit to ten gigabit connections to the internet, where they can provide you know significantly more bandwidth than. You know, they used to be able to. But it would still be great if we had 200 universities and all with that band. Absolutely. And it would be great if we had more. Um, you get, we, on the mirror list, you get the odd email from someone, they're like, hey, I just took over here, and apparently the guy that left like three times before me had set up this mirror thing, and it's just been working for three years. I'm shutting it down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they don't really realize it's even there on their network. Uh, at least they let you know. Yeah, so, sometimes they don't. Mirror manager will figure mirror, out. Mirror, mirror manager is actually really good about going, hey, this hasn't been updated or this has gone away, removed from the pool of the mirrors. But yeah, so mirror churn is something we need to think about. Um, Delta RPM helped out a lot with that. It actually is terrible. Delta oh. RPM is pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, it's terrible server side. The, the place where Delta RPM is really useful and beneficial is. People that live in countries with limited bandwidth, India, Brazil, <coughs> even in Australia, it's really useful because a lot of people mm -hmm. have caps. Right yeah, yeah. The, the, this hotel right here. Um, yeah, so I bought yeah. my caps in Australia. Yeah, if you pay me, you live not in the city where the very good bandwidth, but you know, in, in countries, no. yeah, and they have really a uh, pro real problem with the bandwidth. Uh, yeah. I have friends over there that. Send names once in a week, and it's like, okay, I'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they, they don't know when, when they, they, they get connection, right. stable mm -hmm. connection right. again, yeah. or re organized in a satellite. So, right. so, 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 Delta RPM just you know, saved me 20 minutes this morning on the crappy network here. Yeah. I mean, it's useful, but from the mirror standpoint, it's not Sorry. for you. Yeah. Yep. I run a local mirror, and I'm on one of those really crappy networks where we have eight megabits up and down. Mm -hmm. And I actually use the Delta RPMs, kind of like that guy in Brazil does. Did you? I download the Delta RPMs, have a script that generates the RPMs from the Delta RPMs, and then do a final RCT to make sure everything is right. Sounds so, great. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so useful. I mean, it's yeah. an extra complicated <laughs> yeah. way yeah. to do yeah. it. But yeah, I mean, like in my in my own house, I had unlimited bandwidth, and I had ran my own Fedora mirror for everything. I I moved last year, and I got a nice I got a nice fiber connection, and they have a download cap. I went from unlimited to having to fit everything in 500 gig a month, which I mean is reasonable. But if I wanted to ask sync all of Fedora, I need it, 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 well, I mean, it, yeah. If I wanted to just ask sync pub Fedora. And all of it, you know, it's 1.6 terabytes yeah. or something like that. You know, we a long time ago we used to make this. We had this soft agreement with the mirrors that we wouldn't go over a terabyte of disk. <laughs> we've not been under that, and you know, for for Fedora, four years. We've not been under that for quite a few years, and it's certainly gotten worse with the new composers and. What's the specific problem with those RPMs? The, I, one of the bigger problems is probably that the, because Delta RPM creation is embedded into create repo, and 
when Create Repo runs it, it doesn't have, it, it's probably a small patch to Create Repo to fix it, but it doesn't hash the directories. Right. So we've had, we had at least one mirror that was running their mirror on OpenAFS. OpenAFS has a limit of 65K you know, files within a directory. The Delta RPM directory has like 70 odd thousand files for one of the updates trees. I can't remember which one it was, but he, put it, he, he filed a ticket saying, hey, can you please hash the Delta RPM directories because I can't mirror it. Yeah, that's yeah. what Right. Plus, it's um, at least two small files for every regular RPM that gets updated. Mm -hmm. um, and you wouldn't think that file count makes that much of a difference, but it actually does. Yeah. In fact, right. for Delta RPMs, it, makes, it takes longer to count the files than it does yeah. to transfer. <laughs> so we, we also um, have an issue of sorts where you know, Fedora is so big, and I think this is a place where modularity is going to help a lot, is that Fedora is so big that, you, I've probably said it in like five talks already, but if you get a new Fedora install and you say yum install you know, IISSI that's you know, 300, 200, 300 K, you need to first download 42 meg of metadata about <laughs> all of the RPMs in Fedora. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. Part of the issue with that is that, so yum, there's two different databases. There's yeah. one which is basically a database of packages, and, and there's the one that's all the files. The slash bin and the contents of slash user mm -hmm. bin. Um, and then there's a one which is basically a database of every single file and every single RPM. A and any possible thing that you could say yum install. Or yum, yum repo query. Or, or, yeah. um, and so yum only downloaded the small database <coughs> unless you ran a command which needed to query the bigger database, mm -hmm. at which point it would then pull it down, and that made it quite quick. Yeah. DNF pulls them both down every single time. And mm -hmm. so what should actually be only pulling down about three megs for the average user, so if you do like DNF upgrade or DNF install, you know, yeah. X chat, it will pull down a couple of megs. It's actually downloading 42 megs every single time. Right. Yeah. Is that yeah. a lot of questions? Um, it's a feature. In the vast majority of people's opinions, yes, it is a bug or a regression or whatever. According to the DNF team, it is a feature. So, okay. discuss whichever way you like. Well, I thought you, might have a, you said that the majority might actually stop your QB record in that. You have a card, in, you know, it's a public card in Pega. You actually transfer forms into modules. No. So, you can actually test it, I think, it's for the oh. next grade. Yeah. And you can see if, you know, the use case recovery. Where it would help with modularity is that you only, in, in the, like if you do, you get the, you know, the module metadata and you say, I want to install these five modules, it's only going to pull down the metadata for the repos for right. those five which modules, are much smaller. which are much smaller instead of pulling down all the metadata. So, yeah. Metadata covers all the modules. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it could, it could be really big. Um, so an issue that we're faced with a few things is that new technologies have come along, and I'm going to pick on OS Tree here, um, and Docker as well. If not considered, Multi Arch, they, they built it with x86 64 blinders on, and they, you know, hard code either, you know, in the OS Tree case, the JSON file that defines what you install, it lists a bunch of files. But the bootloader f configuration files and the bootloader programs vary across architectures. It also hard codes in the ref the you know what in a yum like in the yum case you would say you know dollar base arch and it's a variable that yum and DNF you know replace in there. It's hard coded the architecture in the JSON file, so it, it's it's not being well thought out as far as like how are you going to make this thing and make it support multiple architectures. And people want it on power, people want it on ARM. Yeah. I mean, that, that's an interesting thing because, I mean, <coughs> it's an inconvenience, but in a lot of cases, it's also time to market and other deliverables and other roadmaps. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, you speak to those people about it and they're like, yeah, we're sort of aware of that and we're taking it into account, but we've yeah. got so much to do. Mm -hmm. um, and right. yeah, it, for me, it's been a challenge. I've, I regularly have to send up patches to Anaconda where they don't take secondary or alternate architectures into account. Um, 
but you know, image factory of various other tooling has. Um, and I mean, all the maintainers are always very, very responsive, mm -hmm. but it, by the time I debug it and send patches and do various other bits and pieces, it can cost me a day here and there, which yeah. I just don't actually have. Yeah, and, and Docker just doesn't support anything other than XE664, and they're trying to figure it out themselves. I mean, Docker itself runs fine on ARM or AR64 or and power. power, and you know, there's people using it. Coming to a mainframe near you in F25. Yeah, but you know, it's it's not well supported and it's not a great experience for the users, and we need to figure out how we can do more with less, and that's. You know, we we have this in, we have this finite number of resources in you know release engineering and and in engineering and in you know all, all the pieces that go into Fedora. People want to deliver more artifacts, more different types of stuff. Something's got to give. Either flexibility in that you know we can't do something, or if something fails and it's not release blocking, then sorry, you missed the boat. Which is kind of sucks when people are putting in effort. But you know, it, it, it's really hard to get the right balance with, with that. Um, so yeah, that, that's a challenge that somehow we need to try and address to make things better for everybody. And and sometimes things break as a result of more, doing more with less. Yeah. So, sometimes that's infrastructure. Sometimes that's people. Yeah. And we we have a new restriction on things that we added PDC as one of the F twenty four you know features and changes that we did in. You know, release engineering, which PDC, for those who don't know, is a product definition center, it records the output of all the composers. So you can go to it and you can query and say, this is what was in Fedora 24, which is fantastic, but it then means that we're kind of tying things to having this integrated process, or at the least, we then need to ensure that whatever we do, if it is separate, that they all update the same release information so that when you query it and say, Tell me what was in Fedora 24. Tell me what was in Fedora 25. It tells you, and it's the truth. And it's, you know, it's not a lie because oh, we had all this in here at the time, but then we went and we added these pieces on the side, and they're there, but they're not really there. And, you know, it, it, it makes for an extra complication in, in how we do stuff. Ideally, longer term, I would like to have PDC define like you having it defined. Everything's supposed to be in the compose. If it's a release blocking or not, and then Punji will talk to it and say, "Tell me what I need to make because I'm doing a compose for Fedora 25." Yes, sir. Seen my demo. I have not seen your demo. That was a bit of idea. Yeah. Um, so, and somehow we, have, you know, we've accumulated over 10, 15 years, or 12 years, or whatever Fedora's been around now. Lots of technical debt. We somehow need to get rid of that. And we have people. This is my last <laughs> topic. And we need to enable ways for people to do stuff, but do it in a way that when it becomes something that the greater Fedora community wants to embrace, we can say, that's great. You've worked with us. You've gotten, you know, you've, you, you've done it in a way that we can easily integrate in with our proposed process. We get all the metadata. We get all of the, you know, the good stuff that, you know, happens because, as I said before, we have a limited resources. We can't do everything. So, you know, we, we need to figure out ways to enable people to, you know, support themselves and, you know, provide the guidance and direction on how to go about doing stuff. Do we have questions? I guess we have no question. If there's no questions, going once. Twice, three times. Yeah. Do you think that we could have had some sort of, you know, like overwatch over the transition of, you know, home source into modules? Because we are doing something that you guys won't verify, you won't say if it's sufficient or if it's sucks. So there will be a person who actually will get the output of what we are trying to do, that will be awesome. There is a card for this, which is great, which is three weeks from now. And, you know, this is the outcome. Uh, um, so the question was, well, if somebody from you guys could actually like overview what we've done with the, the question is if the Fedora release engineers would overview what the modularity working group's doing. We 
need to be involved and we need to do that. We need to be able to find the time to do that. Um, I think, I, I honestly believe that we're going to have to keep doing the stuff we've been doing and the way we've been doing it at least for longer than what some people think. Yep. You know, like we may end up shipping two versions of Fedora Server in 26. In, in, the, in the server, um, in the modularity talk earlier today, like Langdon said that they want to have a modular version of server as a F26 deliverable. That's great, but I, there's going to be people that really just want to do it in the way they've been doing it. And you know, for, at least for some transition period, we're going to probably have, you know, in that case, two you know, server DVDs, one that's modular based, one that's you know, the traditional comps based. Yeah, we want to have answer for everything as well. The everything where I'm just going to have a new thing in module. So. Yeah, I, mean, I think that every, everything needs to go away. I, I really think it needs to be broken up into smaller chunks and then people will need to enable the pieces that they want to use. And the tooling needs to be there to help support that. Um, you know, Mirror Manager probably needs work in supporting that to be able to su support D DNF. more. DNF will need work. There's, there's going to have to be a lot of work in doing something like that. But I think longer term, the everything repo just has to go away. It's I mean, it's big. Why would you actually keep packages that didn't make it to modules, right? Yeah. We'll, re we'll just rename everything to all other crap. <laughs> right, and everything <laughs> else is a crap one. Okay. Oh, we could rename it to LXDE or something like that. <laughs> Beware. Well, it's dead anyway. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time, Christoph. <laughs> yeah. You're getting yeah. hot. <laughs> yeah. I guess I kind of uh, uh, So yeah, we, we got we got a lot of stuff going on, and you know, the fedora of the future is not going to look like the fedora of today. So, if everything if everything repo goes away, yep, and that sort of implies that there are some things that are currently in the everything repo that will not be accessible, or do they just move to other repo? We'll probably end up having to have, instead of the everything repo, we'll have a whole bunch of smaller repos, and either via modules or via something else, there'll, there'll be methods to make it all available, but you know, you, you won't, um, I mean, and if we want to get to a point where, as I know Matthew would like to get to the point that we support, say, server for 18 months and workstation for six months, We've got to rethink, you know, what what we ship, what we enable, and you know. I would like to be more grand on that. I'd like to say we support this module for six years, and this module for two weeks, yeah. um, and then whatever we get out of that. No. Yeah. So you know, I, the, the the world, yeah. I mean, the world is going to change, and. I mean, ultimately, to answer your question, but we don't have the answer to that yet. There needs to be a solution to that problem. But we're not there yet. Yeah, and, yeah, I mean, we're not there. All of this requires a lot of resources that we currently don't have. So someone, somewhere, either engineering or community or you know, people are going to have to come along and help us to be able to implement all of the stuff that you know, is being requested. And engineering is providing some people. You know, we have four people that are s uh, tasked, you know, full time in helping with rail engine things in different shapes and forms from you know, Fedora engineering today, and you know, they help us get a lot of stuff done. Uh, but it's going to take more than you know seven or eight people. It's probably going to take twenty or thirty people to get everything done and implemented. You know, th this future world is very messy and complicated and a large part it's different and a large part of the workload that historically has been on the end user, you know, you you, you have the repo and you just you know you pull in what you want. And that's now getting put onto release engineering. You know, where we're the ones that are having to you know pull together the, the curated content sets of 
things and make them available. And so you know that that greatly increases the work. And I mean, even if we could, if we automate the crap out of everything, and we're making you know ten thousand different objects instead of you know the few hundred we make today, how if you know a tenth of them fail every day? That's probably going to be somebody's job is just figuring out what, what, why is this one fail? Why is this one fail? Why is this one fail? It already is. It, it kind of already is, but yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a bigger thing because instead of having this smaller well, subset of things to look at, you now got this massive thing. What it well, as soon as we open up the, I mean, that that's going to happen as soon as we open the floodgates and just lay the images dock up because there is a potential of pretty much every RPM to some extent um, being part of a laid image or being a laid image. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean and, and it's going to cause our disk image to go up because yeah. it's, I mean, you can't deduplicate the content inside of a laid image that can be, the mirrors can pick up the de that deduplication. Like you we can't have it. Yeah. I you mean, there, there is technologies to deal with this technology, but that, that that is that, that's not something that's exposable to no. you know a user that's asking you know, and they may not have any kind of DJ that works in that way yeah. on their mirrors. Mirrors are not that No, yeah. like you can't yeah. assume anything about what the no. mirrors. No, helps for us. It's not the Delta mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, I mean, we we got a lot of stuff. So if that's it. Um,